All right, everyone, we are ready to get started. Thank you for coming this morning to your first breakout session. My name is Amber Billy. I'm the Systems and Metadata Librarian at Bard College, and it is my pleasure to introduce Robert Fernandez. He is the Assistant Professor of Resource Development and E-Learning Librarian at Prince George Community College in Maryland. He has worked with Wikimedia Project since 2004 and is a member of the Board of Directors of Wikimedia District of Columbia, a regional Wikimedia organization which engages cultural institutions with Wikipedia, Wikidata, and other Wikimedia projects. So it's my pleasure to have Robert bring us a basic introduction to um, Wikidata. So thank you. And yet the 2004, not a typo, early adopter. Um, <laughs> so, and somehow, here I am. So anyway, this is going to be um, introduction to Wikidata, and what I'm going to do with this one is it's going to be as hands-on as possible. And so I'm actually going to try to get you to edit Wikidata. So if you want to kind of quietly hide in the back, that's fine. But I would like most of the folks in the room to get on their laptop and actually edit something. Um, as I said earlier, maybe you didn't hear it or um, just came in the room. Um, log into Wikidata. You can edit Wikidata without logging in, without having an account, but some of the things we're going to do later require you to be logged in, so it might be your, to your benefit to create an account if you don't have one. If you have a Wikipedia account or an account on any Wikimedia project, that will work on Wikidata. And if anybody needs help with that, um, could the folks experienced hands over there that I see in the corner, yes you Rosie, um, ask those folks for help if you are having problems or ask me for help. And I'm pretty informal, so um, at any time, just chime in with your questions at any point. So I'm going to give you the, the little bit of a spiel. Usually I start talking about these things uh, by talking about um, what structured data is and the benefits of that, but I don't feel like I really need to sell you on that if you're here. So we're going to skip that part. <laughs> um, but Andrew, it's Andrew over there, if you missed his keynote, he created this one pager that's a really good introduction to Wikidata. So you might want to refer to this um, while we're talking or later on. Um, but basically, Wikidata is, let me grab my, sorry, this is going to look really bad on video. Um, <laughs> Wikidata is basically, we're envisioning it as the hub for for metadata, where instead of having separate silos of metadata, it's all combined, it's all linked in one place. And that, and we'll talk about the possibilities of that later, but you can just imagine that. So if you, and it is part of the ecosystem, you can see there's VIAF, for example, is it's one of the links in VIAF, and so it's a, sometimes the links from Wikidata are one way, and sometimes they're a two way in the case of VIAF. Oh no, where did my text go? There it is. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the uh, Open to the Rodlers How to Use Google Slides workshop. The basics. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with RDF triples, but it's the same principle. We've got an item, a property, and a value. And when you see, when you go to Wikidata, like each page will be a specific item. Now the items are referred to, and if, if I walk over here to the screen and anyone can't hear me, please let me know and I'll walk back to the microphone. But uh, there are um, what we call, each item is given what we call a Q number. And it is irrespective of, well we'll talk about the multi-label stuff here, but it corresponds to not just the Wikipedia article, that's the easiest way to think about it. Like every Wikipedia article will have an accompanying Wikidata item that's linked to it. But they're not limited to Wikipedia articles. You can have a Q number about anything. Because you know, just like as if you go to an, like VIAF, everything is a person or a word, or if you go to a certain database, it's usually one type of thing. Whereas all the items in Wikidata can be any type of thing. And you can have, like we've got very large things, like the universe or people, uh, very small things like cats, uh, books, concepts like boredom, which I'm sure you'll be introduced to that in the next 90 minutes. Um, Harvard Medical School here, and then of course for us librarians in the room, the Guardian. And um, Q items can be like for individual items or for a class of items. Like you have Q5 is like every human, and then you'll have other Qs that are specific people. And a Q 
queue number, anyone can make a queue number, anyone can make a queue item. And the, the multilingual aspect, and we'll talk more about that later, is this is Q1, the Q5 is human in every language. So Q5 does not equal human. Human is just the English label for Q5. So Q5 is the important thing here. Whereas depending on when you log into Wikidata and you set your language preferences, when you pull up Q5, you'll see the word for human in whatever you set your home language to. And that way, it's truly multilingual. It's a language agnostic database. It doesn't matter what language you use. So we don't have to worry about those problems about linking concepts and the language barrier and different labels. It's all right there. All right, so that's the item. So what do we do with an item? Well, an item is basically, most of the item is going to be made up of a series of, not made up of properties, but it consists of a list of properties, and then the value is attached to that property. And this is where the controlled vocabulary comes in. The P number is because there's only a certain number of properties. There's only about 4,000 right now. And properties have to go through an approval process. And if anybody's interested in that, we can go through that later on and talk about that and demonstrate that. But it is fairly easy. So if you need a, a property for a particular um, database that you're importing, that can be done. It's not that hard. But it's hard enough in that you just can't make one on the fly. And so that is the very control. And so here's some examples. Instance of, and that, that's the most important one, and we'll talk about that when we get into the, the meat of it. Uh, there's properties for, for particular external databases, there's properties for particular values like date of birth, place of birth, that sort of thing. And like I said, these are controlled, so you can't change the names, the concepts, you can't really change anything <coughs> about these properties. Um, you can just attach individual values to those properties in each. Item. So you'll have the item, you'll attach a property, and then add a value to that. And I'll show you that. We'll be doing that. So if you don't quite rock that right now, that's fine. All right. So what we're going to do now is um, go to Wikidata itself. So if you're not there yet, please go to Wikidata, and we're going to be going off the slide deck now. And we're going to be going to, well, I'm going to show you some particular examples of things on Wikidata. So when you go to Wikidata, do a search and put my username in there and then slash LD4. And you will get actually let me leave that up and let everybody catch up before I bring it up. So you should be on this page here, it's just a list of links. Um, if anyone's having problems with that, hopefully the person next to them can help you find that. Well, go hit Control Plus a few times, see if it gets bigger. Okay. And so I am just gonna, we'll be referring to things on this list here. So this is an example of a Wikidata item I created. And so the first thing you'll see is the label. And, um, and what you see will depend, on, like I said, on what language you have set. And um, this is a very limited one right here. Actually, let me go to one that has a bunch of them, actually, instead.
Sorry about uh, it's being so slow. I don't know what's going on here. All right, so you see most items are not going to have this many languages, of course. That's why I brought this one up because it's, oh, wait, too small, too small, by the way. Eventually, hopefully you'll be seeing this on the regular size on your laptop, so just look at that for now while I, while I get this back to a normal human font size. Control zero. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew should come to all of my presentations. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna click on all our languages again, and you can see not every entry is gonna be this have this many languages would be this robust. A lot of them only have one or two languages, but you can see the possibilities. And so whatever language you type into the search bar, it will bring you to this item. So just as an example, let's see. Um, let me cut and paste the Arabic name. If you type it in the search bar, what you'll see here is the name in your home language there, and then what you typed in in parentheses. So whatever language you use, it will bring you to the same number. The thing that's universal is not Barack Obama, the thing that's universal is Q76. Irrespective of what language that you're using. And also, as you'll see, you'll see up here, in the also known as column here, like every item will have one label in each language, but it will have an, I don't wanna say infinite, I'm sure there's a limit, but I don't know what it is. Um, uh, we've seen them with as many as 50, 100, I think. How many does, um, Andrew, how many did Qadhafi have? Like 50, 75 aliases? Yeah. <laughs> aliases is not the right word, but also known as like alternate spellings, alternate transliterations, nicknames, initials, whatever, you know, variations of the name. So everything will come back here. So you can type in any variation that's listed here into the search bar, it will bring you back to this item. All right, and then just to show you the brief overview of the other features, here, you'll have the statements that we were talking about earlier, where you have the item is, of course, Barack Obama. The properties are here, those P numbers that we were talking about, and then the values attached to this property. So um, what I usually, as a oversimplified shorthand, I usually think of it as Q plus P plus Q. And what happens is, like, Q is, the first Q is Barack Obama, the property, or P, is the instance of, and then the other Q is human. For every, almost every statement, what you attach here, this is not a free text field. It, Wikidata generates its own controlled vocabulary because in almost every instance, there are exceptions, and we'll talk about those, but in almost every instance, when you create a statement and link it to a property, you link it to another value, which is another Q number, another item that's in the database. So if it's not there, you have to create it. And that prevents, you know, somebody, you know, having 100 different spellings of human and then they're all separate. Right? It, all, it all links it all together. And it, in the process, generates its own sort of control vocabulary. <clears throat> and you can see there are many different kinds of properties. Um, a lot of them are people, people he's related to, positions he's held, um, that sort of thing. And every sing, everything that you're seeing on the screen is another Q number. So you don't have to worry about like five different items for different uh, for the same position in the Illinois State Senate. Like somebody typed in Senate, State Senator of Illinois, member of the State Senate. You know, it's all the same thing. It all links together. Okay. Excuse me. Do you mind if we ask questions? Oh, please, please. I, I prefer that, actually. So just on that Q, P, Q thing, mm -hmm. I'm a little confused there. Mm -hmm. um, 
So Barack Obama is Q right. seventy something. Um, the, pro the property such as American mm -hmm. well, would then contain, I would have thought, just a string of text. Right. Well, there is a name field that's just a text string. So not every there are some text string fields. So is that still a state? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is an oversimplification. But most of the statements are attached to other key numbers are, and you have that control vocabulary, there are things that are exceptions. And usually like name string, author name string, because there's a lot of, like, there's literally millions of scholarly articles that have wiki data items, but not every author is gonna have their own item yet. So there's the name string, and you can just write frequent text in there. But the majority of statements are controlled. Please, oh, ask them all. Yes, please. I don't see the Q numbers for the most part. Oh, that's the thing I have turned on. Um, let me show you how to do that. Sorry, you can hover over and you'll see it. Oh, okay. Also, do you remember what the preference is for that to turn it on? I don't know, actually. Let me see if I can find that. Actually, a lot of the cool things, the cool things we have to turn on. Um, is it show hidden categories? Is that show descriptions? Okay, I found descriptions, but I don't remember the thing that makes the Q number appear. Why don't you keep going? I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. We'll try to catch up to it later. Thank you. So yeah, so take our word for it. There's some preference you could turn on to make those Q numbers appear like that. Usually you'll just see the name, but you should be able to hover over it and get something and at least get that. And you don't have to know the Q number because you can, well, we'll talk about that when we talk about editing and how to get that in there. Um, let's, let's see, now I lost my train of thought. All right, so statements. Let me scroll down. We've also got the identifiers, which are basically links to external, in an oversimplified, oh, there's so many, okay, here we go. In an oversimplified way, they're basically just links to external databases. And the definition of external database is pretty broad, so it's not just stuff like VIAF or the LC authority files, it's also like Twitter and Rotten Tomatoes, and IMDB, and pretty much anything that you can generate a unique identifier for, you can link to it. His YouTube channel. Um, so these are sort of freeform fields. It depends on the property here, because, you know, obviously this is kind of, I don't even know what that is, but um, a lot of these properties for identifiers, if they're done properly, they're coded in terms of the, you, it will reject. Let me show, actually I'll just edit it and show you an example. Let me just type a random string in there. And remember, anything you do, you can't undo, so don't be afraid to play around with it. You'll get a little, notification saying that it's not in the right format because one, they should be coded in that um, each identifier will only be in a certain format. Like VIAF, they're all just strings of numbers. And LC, they'll be like, it'll start with N or something like that and then be a string of numbers. And so if you put something in that's not in the right format, it'll uh, give you a little, it won't prevent you from editing it, but it will let you know. It's like, that's, we don't think that's right. And so you can examine it and make sure that it's accurate. And then these are all, of course, these are all linkable. So if you click on one of these identifiers, it will take you to that external database 
and you can see what the Russian dictionary has to say about Barack Obama. Or you can head right to VIAF or IMDB or any number of these databases. Now, one of the main functions of Wikidata in the Wikipedia world is to link all the language versions together. Um, you may or may not know there are 300, almost 300 different language versions of Wikipedia. And just because you edit the English one doesn't make a corresponding change in another language. They're all independent. But they're all linked together here through Wikidata just basically, when a new one is created, someone will, or a bot will, create a link to it. And then this is what creates that stuff when you see on Wikipedia. If you look on the sidebar, you'll see all the languages that it's in. This is what creates these links. It links, it connects all the language versions on the same topic together. That doesn't mean the content is linked in any way. The content is totally separate, different encyclopedias, different editors, different languages, but it's all linked together in Wikidata, so you can seamlessly go from one to another. All right, and then other links to Wikimedia projects, like Wikisource, Wikiquote, that sort of thing. Um, now, we are at, looks like the, I've been rambling on for a half hour, so I think it's time to get a little interactive before I start talking about some more stuff. So, what I'd like you to do is go to that LD4 page and click on that last link there where it says database reports. Don't worry about what you're gonna see there. But it should take you to a list of 2,000 people. And what I'd like each person to do is pick, pick a person, a different person if you can, that's on this list. And we're going to make a few edits to that item. So if you go to the LD4 page on my user page, and under the item editing, let me make that a little bigger here. Click on that database report select right there, the last bullet point on that section. And you will see a list of names under the heading missing gender. And, um, and it's 2,000 people. So go through the list and just pick a person at random and go to that person's item. And we're gonna be edit and you're gonna be editing that item. And I promise that you won't break anything. And if you do, I'll fix it. So. And if you're not logged into your account, that's fine. At this point, it's not necessary if you're having problems with So I'm just gonna go to the first person. And let's take a look at what we see. And of course, the instance of, and I meant to talk about this earlier, but the instance of property is probably the most important because it tells you what it is. Um, and every item should have one of these. Unfortunately, about 9% of Wikidata items don't yet. So if you're creating a Wikidata item, you don't have to worry about filling in every property, but this is the one you want to focus on because it's easy to do and it's the most important. And it's just the broadest category. So you don't want an instance of librarian, you don't want an instance of employee of Harvard Medical School, you don't want anything like that. You want the broadest possible thing. Is it a book, is it a cat, is it a human? So that's filled in. But as you can see, I picked this list in particular because these are items that don't have a lot of information in So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a property. So you're gonna add a statement. Click on add statement. And what it does is it should generate, you could type in anything you want there, but it should generate a drop down list of suggestions. Because it's kind of, so I don't know what the algorithm is, but it's kind of prioritized. It's like, what are the most important things that we think should be in there that are missing yet? And we'll hint, hint give you a hint and say, maybe you should consider filling in one of these things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in that first one, sec, for gender. Now 
All right, is everybody with me so far? So what we, what we should be doing is picking a person off that list and not go to the item for that person and we're adding, scroll down till you see add statement. And please don't be shy if I don't wanna lose anybody. So please chime in if you're lost at any point in this process. Yes, sir. Oh, mobile editing is always fun, yes. <laughs> Where do we start from your page? Um, click on database reports right there. And it should take you to a, like a list of 2,000 names eventually. I was thinking of sweet yeah. But when it gets there, just pick a person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of priority. Yeah. All right, so. All right, so now that we've typed in our property, or we've selected the property we're going to, you know, and this is a, a text field, so you can, if you want to type in a different property, you can, and it will do autocomplete. So if you don't, you don't have to remember the P number for every property, you can type it in if you want, but you can just type in some word, some letters in the name of the property, and it'll probably come up. I don't think I've ever typed more than five or six letters in a property when I edit manually. <coughs> and then go over to the next, space for the value. And then you'll see whatever, the, it, it gives you the most common, you don't have to pick something on this list, but you do have to pick something that's in Wikidata. And some properties are limited into what you can pick. So obviously, for gender, you can only pick off a certain slate of uh, things. Now you're gonna ask me, what do we put in there? Well, you're going, this, um, you know, it's a very complicated question, and you want to be sure of the information you put in there. So this is why I selected this particular list. What this list is, of 2,000 names, is they're all graduates of West Point before 1891. So I think we can safely assume the gender of this particular set of people. So just type in or click on mail, and the advantage of this is like, you can type in other words, and the um, but it's not a free text field. It just gives you suggestions for the items. So you could type in any kind of variation that you want. Well, that probably won't get it, get you to it. But uh, <laughs> if you type in plural, will it default to singular? It will. It should take you to that. Yeah. Or male. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't always work correctly, so you have to be careful. Um, because these are basically going off that list of also known as that we saw before. Mm -hmm. Properties also have that list. So it's just like Barack Obama, and you type in Barry Obama or BHO or whatever. This is the same principle that's going on right now. No, you can type in something else if you want. Database. Right. That's just what they suggest you might want. Exactly. Now you have the option to put in there, like with mo most properties. Uh, not every property, like I said, some of them are limited because, you know, gender, you don't want somebody putting in horse or something. So some of them are limited. But most of them, you can put in anything that's in Wikidata already. What you can't put in is a free text string. But you can put in anything that has a Q number assigned. And if there is something that you need to attach that doesn't have a Q number, you can make a new item right there and then put it in there immediately. Like not right there, but you have to go into a different tab and make the item. But all right, so is everyone at the point where we've got this filled out already and we're ready to click publish? All right, so go ahead and click on publish and congratulations, you've made your first edit to Wikidata. around the applause. <laughs> All right, is everyone with me so far? All right, so what we're gonna do now is it's slightly more complicated, but still pretty easy. We wanna add some more information to this. And then, so date of birth for people is, is a pretty significant piece of information. But we're not gonna just make something up. Where are we gonna get it? Well, you'll see what this list is generated from. It's got an identifier called a column number. And what that is, and you don't have to know that. I, um, I just I picked this honestly because it was kind of obscure and I wanted items that would be 
poor, it would not be complete. But this is just, it's basically somebody named Cullum wrote a book um, of biographies of all the West Point graduates, and now they've been assigned numbers in that book. So that's just what the Cullum number is. But if you click on that Cullum number for your particular person, it will take you to, you probably want to leave, uh, you want to do it in another tab. So you leave this one open. But it will take you to an external database. So click on that column number, and you will see the biography someone's digitized and put this database online. So you'll see the biography of, that, of your person. And so from there, you should be able to find Okay, so I've got one that doesn't have a date of birth. Of course I did, but I did find a date of death, so I can work with that. So, your person should have at least one of those two dates, if not both, the date of birth and date of death on, on this database. So what I want you to do is copy that, and we're gonna be cutting and pasting that manually into Wikidata. So the first thing we're gonna do is select, create, add a statement. We're creating a new statement. And then the statement is just like P plus Q plus P, as we said earlier. So the P is your person, and the Q, I'm sorry, the Q plus P, <laughs> the Q, um, P, Q. So the Q is your person. The P is either date of birth or date of death, whatever you found on the record. And I was only able to find date of death, but a lot of you will have both pieces of so bring up the relevant property, and then we're gonna be cutting and cut and paste or type in, whatever you feel like, that date. Now, the date fields are kind of freeform, but they are limited, and they are structured. And so the great thing about these fields is that it will translate that into a common structure for you. And it will give you a little pre preview. So when I type in ff.4 comma, it's tr the database is translating it into that. So you can type in a string of numbers, but it will translate it into uh, this structured format here. And it's also good to check that because a lot of times, you know, when we, um, Americans and British folk reverse the numbers when they type them in. So it's a good thing to check and make sure you have them correct. I notice he's using the American way of doing that rather than the correct one. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and it's making it accurate. Yeah, so, so you can choose, that's one of the things you can choose on preferences. Um, I think the display you can choose, but the structure, you know, it's got a common structure behind that. All right, and let's click, click publish, and so you'll see the final format is, of course, you know, whatever you see in preferences, but you should see something like this, whatever you've typed in, whether it's numbers or abbreviations, or whatever, it will, it puts it in that uh, standard format. So is anyone having had problems at this one? Is everyone able to successfully add a date? All right. Let's one other question. Sure, sure. What would happen if two of us picked the same person? You <sighs> might get an edit conflict, but what will probably happen is you'll have two dates of it'll just duplicate the information, which is not a big deal, okay. as long as it's correct. And so, you know, in a bottle, we'll through later and delete. Alright, so I thought I saw some hands over here, did anyone need help with this part of the... If you've already done this, go ahead and look for, I'll come over there in just a second. See if you can, 
if most of you seem like have already successfully done this. So look for, go back to your entry if you're inclined and see if there's any other information that you feel like we can bring over to Wikidata. And I'll help you how to, and then once we're done, make sure everybody gets those dates in, we'll see if we can put that in, a, put that in structure that for you. Yes, and so, so every single one I've tried says this set daily. Oh, okay, now that's the that's the edit for you. Go back. We need to where is Yeah, there should be a little link there, but I don't see it on the moment view. Maybe if I go to desktop here. Okay, and then and then put down the add statement there. So, oh, sorry. Uh, so I noticed that educated ad has, has a reference stated in column numbers. Did we also do that same type of thing for the data? Yeah, actually, yeah, this would be a good opportunity for me to show. Thank you for that suggestion. I will show you how to add references. All right, so I wasn't planning on doing this, but this is a really good idea, so I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. Um, a lot of state, we would prefer as many things be referenced as possible. Uh, but don't feel obligated if you're just learning or something, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you click on add reference, and you can do any number of things. You can use reference URL and cut and paste the URL, um, or if, it's, if you're referring to a reference that's already in Wikidata, you can just go state it in, and then you could just type in column, and then you can, I, you know, I put column, you know, column number is fine. Um, I think it's the columns register. No, um, let's see. Let me see what the official name is. Yeah, column number should be fine. But yeah, so. So this is probably the easiest way to cite something because and you just click on publish. And then so when someone wants to uh, reference something, it's just there's a link to it where they can find out more information about where you got your, your data. And then, and if you're just pulling it off a web page or something else, you can always put in, cut and paste the URL, but we, you know, we wanna make these things as structured as possible. So the preferences, of course, if it's already in Wikidata, Now another thing is, do you all see, when you put in references, do you see that copy button, or is that a widget that I had to add later? Which cop? I this, think this that's, a, that's a gadget. It's a gadget. Okay. <laughs> so let's I'll, I'll show people how to install we'll this skip afternoon. That. We'll skip that. I'm doing this afternoon. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about references. Mm -hmm. I think that's just kind of fascinating and puzzling. So when we did the, the, the gender, I actually added a reference then, and I was able to Let me see. Let me see what you. Let me take a look at what you've done. I show everyone this. If you have something open that's not filled in, it won't let you save it. So if I add like a bunch of references and don't finish filling them in, you'll see I can't save it. It won't let me publish it. Now, if you decide you don't need that, you can just click on remove 
and take that field away, and then um, <coughs> or click on cancel and it'll cancel your edit. So if, you, if your publish button is grayed out, that just means either you haven't made any changes yet, or you have left something blank. Yes? I have a question. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a date of birth. I have a place of birth. Um, well, that's fine too, yeah. Can I put a plan of birth and then put it in? I can't uh, find the, the one like, right here. Right here. Like, yeah. I have to find it. Oh, it might be a town that doesn't, house, you know, that's not a database or something like that. I just go to the state level at that point. But yeah, that's a good point. And let me let's let's do that and I'll show you what what happens. Alright, so I'm gonna go go back to your person. Let's see, it doesn't it just says Vermont, so uh, Washington DC, perfect. So it says where he died. So I'm gonna add the place of death here. And this can be a little bit tricky when you're dealing with place names. Because it all depends on what, if, if the place name, like maybe it's a town that doesn't exist anymore, um, or it's an old name for a town, that alias is not in the database, you know, something like that. Um, but most times it'll be pretty easy. And you'll see, I'm just cutting and pasting Washington DC, and it's taking that and putting it in the standard format. So it's like, can't emphasize that enough, it's not a free text field, but it will give you equivalents a lot of times your town might not show up, so maybe delete the state. Uh, just make sure you're clicking on the right state and not like town of Pennsylvania, you don't want that. Um, and so like I said, some of these towns, like maybe the town disappeared in the 18th century or something like that, who knows. Um, but try something like that, you know, try pulling that place of birth, place of death information over and play around, play around with that as your next step and we'll see if we can help you. All right, does anyone have any other suggestions about what kind of information that you see on your person that you might want to try to pull over? Um, I did the rank, rank G. Yes, yes, I'm trying to remember the property for that, and so I'm gonna type in rank, and it gives me a couple suggestions, and so obviously military rank is what we wanna go with. Yeah. And then for my person, and then you can go as granular as you want. You could put each one in, and then any property that you put in, you can put time limits on if you want. So I'm gonna do a really complicated one, and you can just, if you want to just put in captain and be done with it, that's fine. Um, but it looks like the highest ranking chief was Brevet Major here. So Rob. Mm -hmm. Is for that um, the rank, or is that a qualifying condition of the rank assigned? Uh, we're going to find out. I have no idea. <laughs> OK, it looks like it's a qualifier. Good call. Um, you know what? I'm going to click on that. You know what? That's a I'm going to move on to the previous rank. So we don't have to deal with that. <laughs> All right, so. We're gonna go with Captain here. Oops. And then of course you have se several options because like, you know, there's the naval rank of Captain, there's the army rank, so make sure that you pick the one that's accurate. And since we're dealing with West Point graduates, I believe most of these folks were not in the Navy. So, <laughs> but uh, click on that. And then I'm going to add a qualifier. One thing we can do is, and the qualifiers are all optional, so like I said, if you want to just slap in the highest rank and be done with that, that's fine. So captain, and then I'm going to find when he was appointed that. So it looks like 1823. Oh wait, no, here's the date. He was made a captain in the first artillery, June 1st, 1821. So we're going to put that as our start time here. Oh, what is wrong with me? Um, all right, copy, paste, and then again, it's translating that into the standard structured format. Click on publish. I'm sorry? I, I didn't, how did you add that? Oh. 
there's two there's two things you can do. There's you, you can add to uh, each property. You can click on add qualifier or add reference. And if you put one of the, if you put something in the wrong place, that's fine. A bot will come along and just flip them around. I can't tell you how many times I put references and qualifiers. Like an hour later, it's fixed. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> I probably should be encouraging that. But uh, so yeah, so you can add your qualifier or add a reference, and then each qualifier is a property. And so uh, you know start time, and then so I just pick the start time property and then enter the value there. And again, like I said, don't feel obligated to do that. Qualifiers are a bit more advanced, they're a little tricky, and sometimes they can just be a pain. So if you wanna just put in the rank, that's fine. There are plenty, you know, not everything. We bring to Wikidata the same ethos that we brought to Wikipedia. Not everything has to be perfect the first time. It's a work in progress, and I'm gonna show you some examples of, actually that should be the next thing I show you, is some examples of how these got developed. But, um, while I'm click on publish here, but while I'm talk, and feel free to continue playing around with properties while I show you this, but I'm gonna go back to my LD4 list. And I'm gonna show you an example of a property that was developed through the work of several different people, all of whom know each other, but it turns out none of us knew that we were working together. Excuse me, Robert. Yes. Oh yes, I apologize, yeah. So this is um, an item for a 19th century physician named uh, Mary Willey. And so what I did in February was, I found a book that listed, it was a biographical dictionary of every female doctor before 1863. In America, sorry. And um, so I just added the list of names to wiki data with a tool called Open Refine, which we'll talk very briefly about later, and you'll have an opportunity to learn about it later on this weekend. But this is, you can see all the information I added. Not a lot of information. The name, the fact that they were a physician in the description, human, female, United States of America, 19th century. No birth dates, no death dates, nothing specific. Because all I was working with was just a list of names. And that's fine. If that's all your data set has, you can put that in there. And what happened was that a couple months later, Rosie over here was making her way through a different, a different book and wrote a Wikipedia article about her. And she didn't know that I created the Wikidata. But now that this article exists, it was linked to the Wikipedia item. And what happens at that point is that somebody can do this manually or use tools or so forth, but there's ways to pull out structured data out of a freeform Wikipedia article and pull it into Wikidata, or you can just cut and paste. And then, um, just a second, and you can see how much it expanded with that information. You've got exact dates of birth, dates of death, uh, place of birth, and then now it's all in structured format. Because she wrote that Wikipedia article, it was there, and now we have an external identifier as well. And so it's a way, so instead of this information was siloed in two different reference works, completely different data sets, and now they've been brought together because a couple people did some work separately that didn't even know they were working together. And now all this data is linked together. And the third person, our friend Alex, came along later and added an image. And I don't know if he added the image manually or used, there's a tool, like you can see. I have, just this is an example of one of many tools. It's just a pop-up and I can click on it and it'll pull all the images that are in Wikipedia about this person. It gives me the option of adding them to the Wikidata article with just a click. And that's just one of the many tools that exists there. But yeah, so he added the image, and so now the image is there too. And so I saw some hands over here. Yeah, I was just curious, uh, so to sync up Wikipedia and Wikidata, mm -hmm. I mean, I know when, the, when Wikidata was like initially created, or predecessor to Wikidata was initially created, a lot of that was just 
this is automated, right? Is, is there any uh, ongoing uh, automation of this sinking without human intervention, or is it all the? Uh, I don't know all the details because I'm not super techy. Um, but I know there's a variety of like, variety of tools that people use them on an ad hoc basis to go through. I think there's a couple bots that do it now. I don't know if how consistent it is. I don't know like how much coverage there is that it automatically happens, but I know there's a lot of effort to instead of entering stuff manually, like to try to pull things. Because Wikipedia is a free form format, but there's a lot of structure to parts of it. So you can easily pull out dates of birth, dates of death, that kind of thing. So that stuff is probably this all on. Sorry, I missed, how did the two become connected initially? Um, that is an excellent question. Let me see if I can figure it out from the, the history. Because there's a, like I said, there's a variety of different tools, or you could just do it manually. Um, let's see if I could figure it out from here, how exactly it got. Oh, here it is. So apparently Rosie did it. Do you remember if you did it manually or or I what? That I didn't do it manually because <laughs> someone's running a bot, and whenever I write a Wikipedia article, that bot either creates a new Wikipedia item or connects what if there's already a Wikipedia item connects my article, the article I wrote on Wikipedia with that. Now I'll go back in as soon as I see if I get a notification. Gadget's new too. I, I, I'm not sure why every article I write automatically gets. Well, because you're popular. That's really what it is. People are following your articles. Uh, yeah, that's really all to be honest. So and I guess the thing that I was confused by was the, that, that original matching where there was so little information that we really wanted to catch on was the way the name. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, um, I don't know how it got matched. Yeah, just because, you know. It can't be because there's because I know you can do it on um, open or fine and it gives you like a list of potential matches and then you can you can click on it. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of tools and it's kind of all happening. There's like no unfortunately like this is all there's no one way and so like a lot of times you just don't know how it happened a lot and you of hope you did it. You hope it happened correctly. Simultaneously, done by humans and done by bots. So. When this alerts you, do you get an opportunity to um, say yes, that's a correct link, or no, it's not? Or has somebody um, else done When it notifies me, I can choose to go look at the notification or not. And when I look at the notification, I can, I don't think I've ever seen it where it's actually wrong, this isn't the person, but I might know of alternate um, ways to spell the name or write the name, and there's a place if you scroll up to the top where Rob, I think, created this. Yeah, I don't think I put in the other name, though, so. Now, see how it says, also known as Mary Mitchell Holloway Wilhite? That, that was either me adding that, or Rob initially called this person Mary Mitchell Holloway Wilhite, and maybe I made the change so that the name of the Wikidata item matches the name of the Wikipedia article. And why I chose that name is I did a search using the four words or the three words and found more under the three words versus the four words, which is why it reads like this yeah. too. And depending on the tool you use, yeah, it'll also maybe match the dates of birth and dates of death if they're available and that sort of thing. Um, this might be a good segue to do <coughs> a match tool, actually. Can I ask Not automatically, no. Well, it will be in the input box if you're using if you have the right kind of info box. Wikipedia, a Wikidata info box. Okay. I'll show you an example of that really quickly. So you really have to change it in both places. 
Yes, unfortunately there's not a lot of links. Sometimes there are, and the future is it's all linked together. Thank you, thank you. Um, but let me show you the article for Nighthawks, because I know that Andrew put an info box in that one. Um, so if you see, so this is not universal yet on Wikipedia. But this is what we call an, a Wikidata info box, a Wikidata powered info box, or whatever. Um, and all this metadata is drawn from the structured data on Wikidata. But the thing is, you have to manually put this box in there. You have to edit the Wikipedia article and put that box in there. There are some language versions, like the Basque and the Catalan versions, that are really pioneers in that, that it automatically generates as the default, it pulls that information from not so much on the English, they're really fans of manual artisanal editing on, um, on Wikipedia, on the English Wikipedia, so it's kind of been a little fight to get some of these boxes in there. But when you make a change to Wikidata, it's automatically reflected in this type of info box. So if you change the image, the image will change. If you, ch you know, and then from Wikipedia, you can edit Wikidata. If you click on that little pencil, Next each item, it will take you to Wikidata and let you edit the metadata there. Or you could just click on the link that says edit on Wikidata. So um, this is, I don't want to say rare, but it's not universal. And um, we're talking about your info box here and the info box fight. But uh, you know, this is some of, a lot of us see this as the future. As that if you edit Wikidata, this information gets edited on 300 language Wikipedia's simultaneously. And so you just put the metadata in one place. Yes? Might I say, this, in my opinion, is the best practice. The change should occur on Wikidata, and then with things like this info box, in any language Wikipedia, you need to change once, and it can be viewed on all the other articles in all the other language Wikipedias versus what sense does it make for an article on Barack Obama to be in 300 different languages, someday he will die, and now 300 different language versions have to go in and make the change in an info box versus just do it once. Yeah. And um, you know, in a lot of places also when they draw information from Wikipedia, they're automatically updated. Um, if you're familiar with the snack database, um, I'm sure a lot of you are. Though it draws their images from Wikidata. So if you change the picture of a person, it'll change the image in the snack, which really annoyed them when I did it during their presentation <laughs> uh, in Columbus. But uh, all right. Um, so since we're talking about matching, um, this will be a good time to. And if you want to keep doing what you're doing and ask questions about that, that's fine. What I'm going to do is take you down to all oh, the query tool. Okay, I'm going to talk about. We got 30 minutes left, so we're going to kind of do this out of order and rush through this. But I'm going to start with the mix and match tool um, down here under tools and gamification. And I think, and you're going to have to log in if you want to use this. Um, and I'll show you the process here. It says log into Widar. Don't worry about what that is. Just click on that. And if you are logged into your Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia account, whatever it is, if you're logged into Wikidata, all you have to do is click on that blue button and click on the other blue button and it turns it on. Um, and if you want to just watch, that's fine too. But this is, um, let's take, what was the name that I was going to use earlier? Uh, I will use the name from uh, that the librarian that was mentioned in the keynote. Doris Hagrid Clack. And so we're, what this is, oh, you know what, before I do the search, let me talk about what the heck we're looking at. This is what's called the mix and match tool. And what we're doing with this, this is one of my favorite hobbies. Um, we're in mass importing data sets from other databases. And what this does is basically it says, here's a list of external identifiers, like a BIAF number, like a column number, like who we're working with. And this tool allows you to match them to existing Wikidata items or create new Wikidata items. And you don't have to do this, but it's much easier than doing this manually. And if you're importing a database like, say, 
the Whitney Museum of American Art. Probably almost all of the artists are already in there, in Wikidata. So what you can do is use this tool, and it matches, oh, these are works. OK, these are artworks, not people. But you can see either way, the same principle is the same. It pulls in the label and the description of the data, and you can verify that these are the same thing. And so what happened, and then if you're pretty sure these are the same, and, and I'm pretty sure these are the same, click on confirm. And let me go to the Wikidata and show you what it does. It adds the property, the Whitney Museum of American Artwork ID. It adds the number. You don't have to do anything manually. You just have to make that one click. <coughs> now, we've got a constraint violation, so let's see what that is. Oh, OK, just do more of that. You can, I, you know, the ones with the exclamation point you can ignore. The ones with the lightning bolt, pay attention to these. And I know I'm kind of rushing through this because I want to show you the query tool. So I apologize for that. I was hoping to be more hands-on with this part. Um, but what I'm going to do is, let me see. So I did a name search for Donna Sagra Clark, who's the librarian that was mentioned in the keynote, and I spelled her name wrong. <sighs> And when you do searches for people, maybe you take out the middle name, because as you'll see, Okay, so you can see that she's already been matched in these two different databases here. And if you take out her middle name, let's see if this works this time. All right, and you'll see in this database, she's identified just as Darius H. Clagg, and so it's not gonna match when you do the search. But it looks like somebody's already matched it. Oh, that was me. Um, so this is the kind of things you can do with, with, with large data sets that you won't, you won't have to, basically the point of showing you this is, you don't have to go in there manually and make these changes that we've been making. There are ways to scale this type of work. All right, so I'm um, running short on time, so I wanna make sure I, uh, I'm gonna show you one last thing, and then I will open this up to questions. Um, I wanna show you the query tool really quickly. Um, and there's a link to this on every Wikidata page. If you look in the left column, it just says Query Tool. And we're gonna, I'm going to just go to this specific query, and if you want to follow along, you can too, or you can just watch. But this is a database query that I did um, a couple months ago. It's, it pulls from the database every single Michelin star restaurant in Washington, D.C. And so, great. So it doesn't just generate a list. If you do it correctly, you can also, it will map them for you automatically. And so when you query the database, and anybody can go to the query tool and make a query, there's a pretty much no limit to what you can do. Now what do you need to do for this to happen? Well, one, the data has to be complete and accurate. <coughs> so, you know, you have to do some stuff in the back end, you have to go in, you have to make sure, do all these places have geographical coordinates? Are they all marked as Michelin star restaurants? And but once the data's in there, there's any number of things you can do with it. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, like, how do you generate something like this? Um, especially, you know, 
me with my limited skill set. So let me show you what it took to get to this point. This is all, this is all it takes. Now don't worry about whether or not you understand this, let me make it a little bigger. I just want to show you how potentially simple a query that looks complicated can be. This is all I did. It pulls in, I'm not sure what some of these numbers mean, so let me hover over them. Um, so all I've done is pulled in every, every okay, award, property award received, and then the value is Michelin star. Property is located in this particular geographical area, and the value is Washington, D.C. And then pull the coordinate location. So once you get the hang of this, you can see how easily, easily it is to put together a query that does something that looks really complicated. And I love the mapping tool because it, it's really flashy, and it looks like you did a bunch of work, but you really, it's just three lines of query. So if you are inclined, go to the query tool, and like I said, and this will be our last exercise, um, go to the query service right here, or any page on Wikidata, click on query service, you'll see a page like this, and I'd like you to run your own query, it doesn't have to be this. What we're gonna do is do something really simple, go to examples, and click on cats, and then press the button here to run the query, and almost instantaneously, you will get a list of cats. What this is, is every, it's not every species of cat. What I'm pulling is, you'll see, every instance of cat. So everything that's labeled instance of cat. Property instance of, and then value cat. And so that brings up every individual cat, not cat species, because that would be instance of species. It's instance of cat. So you can see the variety of cats, Mr. White, Kremi, and Tom, and um, Sam the cat has eyebrows. <laughs> I'm kind of curious about that one. So here's our Wikidata item. And we'll, if there's a Wikipedia article about him, and unfortunately there isn't. Um, but this is, this, cat, this is a cat who's allegedly an internet celebrity. <laughs> we'll see, but anyway. So the reason I want you to run this query is because I want you to run your own query. And I want you to pick your animal. Don't pick something obscure because there's not gonna be a lot of Sam the uh, you know, rhinoceros with no eyebrows or something. You know, pick an animal that you think there's gonna be a lot of famous versions of. And I will show you how to edit this query. So is everyone, so like I said, go to the query service, click on examples, and then go bring up the cat example. And I'll go through the steps really quickly because we're running out of time. But query service, examples, and then click on the first example for cats. And what I want you to do is, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. So this is Q146 house cat. So we're gonna change that to something else. But now I know what you're thinking, well, I don't know what number to put there. Don't put a number. Just type in whatever it is you want and then do control space, and it'll bring up a list of potential Wikipedia <laughs> items that you might want to put there. So I am going to click on that one here. I'm going to run my query, and then I get Serge the Llama here. There's only one llama in Wikidata, apparently. And there's a picture of him. There he is. So what I'd like you to do is the last exercise is, and I wish we had, I apologize for running over. We don't have as much time as I'd like to, to run queries, but I'd like you to at least run this one query. Try to fill in, remember it's control space. Just type in what you want, control space. It'll give you a list of options. So we wanna change that cat to something else. Control space, and it'll give you some, some options. Yeah. There are no penguins in the No named penguins. So does anyone, okay, so we managed to get penguins no and there's no names. No names <laughs> Did anyone, um, yeah, I ran llamas and sloths earlier, and that's why I went with llamas, because I couldn't find a sloth. I found a donkey. So you found a donkey? I found a donkey. All right, so let's, let's do, <laughs> let's, uh, let's run that query. So control space gives us. And I didn't pick the second one. Yeah, don't go with the, 
Yeah, go with the more common name and then run the query. And there are six, the Messiah's donkey, okay. <laughs> I'm a little curious about this. That's not gonna be blasphemous at all, right? Um, biblical animal, okay. So I guess it's a specific Old Testament thing. Um, let's pick a more fun one. Let's see who Smokey is over here. A therapy donkey for the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> I've been learning so much today. No picture, fortunately. Let me see if there's a picture on his Wikipedia article. There's a picture of a hat for some reason. Anyway, so anyway, so queries are really easy. There are more complicated ones, um, of course, and there are folks on Wiki, Wiki data. There's a query page that you can ask for help with your query with the more complicated ones. But if you want to just pull like a list of cats or something, it's really easy. And I know if you look at this, it looks really complicated. And it is. And you don't have to do all this from scratch. Just pick one of the examples that's most similar, because there's many types of examples. So if you pick the example that's most similar to what you want, and you can pretty much easily alter it to bring up whatever you want. But I would at least like you to try to look for an animal at the very least and see what you can come up with. I'm pleased to find the heifer <laughs> All right, so um, pretty much not a lot of time remaining, so I'm going to leave this open to questions or examples of good animal queries. Yes, sir. I noticed that Wikidata has some scholarly articles. It, it has more, yes. What was the number that we saw? Like 40%. 40% of Wikidata scholarly articles. There's a bunch of folks importing like all of PubMed and a whole bunch of things like that. So I was kind of surprised by that. I mean, is that considered part of the scope of what you did? <laughs> it is up for debate. <laughs> um, and it's very, yeah, because you know some people think, oh, it's great that all this stuff is in there. Let's see what we can do with it. And other people are saying, well, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't in there yet, and yet there's like. I'll create an article on a new person, and there'll be like three scholarly articles about them that are already Wikipedia, you know, but that person isn't in there. And so it's like, what are the priorities here, you know? So as of this point, yeah, it's part of the part of the package, and you can put whatever you want in there and go for it, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. was surprised that yeah. you know, maybe this was an anomaly or something. No, it's just, it, it, it is kind of an anomaly in that this is what a handful of active really active users have decided to focus on it. And basically, it's a, wide, it's a wild west right now, and you can focus on whatever you want. And if you think that the database doesn't have the, this thing you're interested in, just you can put it in. You know? and, um, and the community can help you find the tools to do that. You know, I just like, you know, the thing like, it's a learning curve. It is a learning curve because, um, you know that list of women doctors that I put in, you know, it's just like, I did that in an hour. But it also took me a lot of time to get up to the speed where I was comfortable enough with the tools to be able to do that. That's interesting. So you yeah. said it was about 40% oh, of Wikidata? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and we can, we can name the people who are responsible. We know most of them. Yes. And most of them are of a certain type you'll see, like, I think all of PubMed might be in there, um, but that there's a lot of, it does, it's definitely skewed, it is part of the biases again. It's like, and it, you know, it's not that the folks who, who put these in were biased, it's just they have certain interests and it biases the database, so it's leaning towards science and medicine and leaves out the humanities and coverage of, of underrepresented groups and so forth. I thought I saw a hand over here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just, I know we're running out of time and um, on your It's the thing that I work with the most now. It's incredibly useful. It's really powerful. We're going to try to. Have, we're hoping to have a birds of a feather session tomorrow about it, Great. and we'll demonstrate it if if we can. If not, we'll just make one on our own. There's already one written on the board, so you can vote for it. But uh, <laughs> yes. No, I'm just saying I'll vote. Oh, okay. 
but yeah, and so I, want, I was hoping to bring it up and show you, but basically what it is, is it's like a, it's a tool where you basically import a spreadsheet of your data, and you work with it. It will automatically match it to Wikidata items, and, um, or you can go through and manually match them or verify the matches, and it helps you clean up your data, and it, it's really useful to import hundreds of thousands of things at a time. Like I, I spent a couple days just editing 400,000 things because I wanted to, because it annoyed me, because there was a bunch of people that had a blank description, so I just said, I'm gonna call all of you researchers, and now there's 400,000, and I just, you know, it's really easy. I didn't have to write any code, because I can't. Um, I didn't have to do that much, so like once you get the hang of using over refine, it's incredibly powerful, and it gives you so much that you can do with it. It's, it's amazing. If you want a tutorial or something to page through and kind of get a, get some, hands-on lessons on how to work with it. Uh, Library Carpentry has a really nice lesson that, it's lessons used in the workshops, but it's great for just you know self-tutorials as well. I'll tweet the link to the lesson. So I have a, some, perhaps a more obscure question about the relationship between all of this and control vocabularies. Um, where I, I've noticed <coughs> that people are starting to import control vocabularies into the data, presumably so that uh, they can make mistakes. It strikes me that that's going to challenge both models a little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that my, 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 that's a sort of vague statement rather than a question. But there's a sort of question in that, which is, how is that going to play out? Uh, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> um, it's kind of like happening like an ad hoc level. You know, we're trying, I know um, Andrew's been trying to mash, what was it, the Getty or something? The Getty's art thesaurus? Yeah. to existing Wikidata items, and then there's like lots of similar edit efforts out there to do that. Um, because it is kind of a mess, like the ontologies on Wikidata are a mess. Yeah. Um, and so it has, the, you know, it's not a full controlled vocabulary, it's kind of like just a controlled vocabulary that's developed on an ad hoc basis. And so there's a lot of cleaning up to do. And so, you know, importing those vocabularies is part of that. The special where it's especially messy is how items relate to one another. Um, you know, in the hierarchies and that kind of thing. Um, like, is this an instance of this? Is this a subclass of this? And so it, it can get very complicated. And, and so basically, we don't know how it's gonna play out, and there's a lot of potential <coughs> for if you think something should be a certain way, you could just go in and make it happen. And there's a lot of potential for that. Yes, ma'am. So I, I've been going through the That's exactly what should not happen in Wiki, Wikidata. All right, let me make it a list. What the, there's, th oh, there's three, there's only three. So a lot of times, a lot of times what these queries are useful for is quality control. Yeah, because we, um, Andrew did a query on Union, a uh, graduates of an old, um, a defunct American university called Union College. And what, and then when he did the query, I noticed, like, here's a guy who's listed as a graduate, but he's like, we did the timeline, and he's all the way over here, 100 years before the school was yeah. open. So that's a good, really good way to test your data sets, is like, you can find outliers like that right away. So I'll go look at that later, and it might just be a matter of those three specific items are just wrong. Not from a query like this, because this is a counting query, but you can easily <laughs> run a query that'll make like make a list of all these things. Like a list of donkeys and just swap out donkeys for people with Verde's eyes. Yeah. So these are not uh, this is not happening automatically, somebody has no. to run the query and figure out oh, 
Right, there's certain kinds of quality control that are happening automatically, like in terms of formatting, in terms of like you can't put in a, you know, it flags it when you put in an identifier that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And we can, and you'll see like the data, but a lot of these depend on just individual effort, quality control level. Like that list that I showed you of, of people from West Point, that list is a list of errors. That list is a database query that somebody ran and said, here's a bunch of items that, of people that have no gender. Mm -hmm. So that list is a mistake. And so, but it's waiting for someone to come along and fix the mistake. So, the, like so many things in the Wikipedia world, it's in an ad hoc level. The way somebody has to go in and do it. Or write the bot that does it. So, in, in the afternoon, we'll talk about maintenance queries and how to fix these errors. So that's, uh, that's a good question. Somebody put the wrong item uh, as the eye color, so it's probably somebody editing in Spanish looking for mm -hmm. green. Verdes, if, if you look at the query for what it refers to, it's referring to a town. So that actually <laughs> oh. that somebody used as the eye color. Oh. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, so what probably happened sounds like somebody was typing it in and they picked the wrong thing on the drop down menu. Huh. Right. right. So don't just click on the first thing that comes up, mm -hmm. like make sure that it's actually what you want. So good, that's good, no pun intended, but good eye there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we, if we have a data set, we can control, we want to make everything to be useful. We could either use a tool or uh, API. I'm assuming there's an API. Yeah. Uh, like the easiest way for... If we have a marriage license for our county, we inherited the records from the, county, from the state, the county, whatever. We can digitize thousands of them. And there's index books with the TypeScript names, too. Is that something we can contribute? Uh, I don't know, because it might be a notability issue, because like, because the bar is really low for notability on Wikidata, but I don't know how, at the individual marriage license level, well, I'm not sure. But there's things that could be done with that, like maybe like a, a separate wiki base or something for that. Um, but yeah, let's, um, later this, today or this week, let's brainstorm about that and see what I can come up with, but I can't think of, but yeah, if you but in general, if you had a data set, you know, open refine would be the the go to tool for that. I live for coding. Oh sorry? I live for coding. Oh well then, you know, then you, I'm not the person you want to talk to then. If you if you know how to code, yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway. Um, so this is just to wrap up. Um, any last questions? And um, like I said, you don't and the point of this will was to show you the tools that you can use to do really powerful things without having to learn to code. So, uh, and hopefully this will get you started, but um, feel free to ask any of us. You know, we're a really open and helpful community. Like, I learned all this stuff just by, you know, watching other people do it and going to uh, workshops like this. And so, and you could do the same thing. So, don't <coughs> be intimidated by this stuff, please. And if you can't do what you want with it, like, ask for help and we'll, uh, we'll help talk to your problem. Thank you, and um, thanks for thanks for coming. And like I said, we are like during the conference or afterwards. Feel free to track us down and ask us questions. So now I believe it is lunchtime. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> which thanks so much. I think is back up in the rotunda area.